Welcome to the wrap up, a VR live stream focused on keeping you up to date with the adoption of universal profiles and growth of the new creative economy. Join us as we uncover the fusion of technology, artistry, and innovation that's redefining how we create, share, and experience in this digital age. It's time to wrap it up. Welcome back, everyone, to the wrap up. Today's April 12th, year is 2024, GM Day. Before we dive into today's topics, take a moment to click that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It helps a ton and ensures you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes. Remember, what you hear in this podcast is just our opinion and not professional financial advice. We're not experts. If you need specific advice, please ask someone who's a professional in that area. Listen at your own risk and always double check before making decisions based upon what we talk about. Alt Synonymous, how are you today on this fine Friday? I'm doing good, buddy. How are you? Uh, You know... I'm getting over some uh, rainy day blues, some low motivation blues, and then some technical difficulties that, I mean, the ghost in the machine was trying to prevent this from happening today. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been feeling that as well lately. Got some stuff going on as well in my life. But, uh, you know, we just try to push through and uh, continue forging the path ahead, right? Yeah, of course. There's a lot of bullish stuff going on in the ecosystem. I mean, it was really, really exciting. We'll get to the... Um, We'll get to the sleepy spaces with HubDAO uh, yesterday because I think that was a really bullish experience. People were feeling the love, but we'll get to that in our top stories. Before we get there, we want to remind everyone uh, that this Monday on the 15th, there is a there are actually two, two, count them, two spaces with the Liquid team. Well, uh, The first one happens at 12 p.m. CET. The second one at 9 p.m. CET, uh, that'll be an opportunity to hear what is going on with the Liquid Protocol. I'm sure lots of people are interested and want to find out what's going on with their locked funds. This will be the time to hear from the Liquid team. I don't know who will be there and who will be speaking, but we want to remind you that this is going on. Don't miss your opportunity to attend and hear directly from the team uh, what happened and where are we going from here. We mentioned this up atop in the sponsor read because Liquid was our sponsor for a number of months and it's our uh, our duty really to provide this information to you all. So we'll be there as well. Again, as uh, a staker in the Liquid protocol, I am just as interested in hearing about um, the... Sorry, I'm just reading our show notes in the back. I keep seeing the little... Uh, a little chat box going off. Um, we're just as interested in hearing about any potential resolution as you all are. So don't think for one second that that's not really right at the forefront of our minds. Alts, yeah, you weigh in on that. Yeah, indeed. Um, super anxious to kind of hear what the next steps are and, and where we're stand with everything. Cause yeah, we definitely want to get some resolution moving on that. I know everybody's anxious to get uh, moving into kind of the next phase. Okay. We won't belabor that point. We're not going to stick here for a long period of time because, again, there's a lot of other stuff going on in the ecosystem that I feel is fun, exciting, entertaining, all of those things at once wrapped up in a burrito. Okay. So <laughs> nice Chipotle sized burrito. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, in our neck of the woods here where I live, it's, um, there's a, oh, God, TC. There's a, there's a, I won't give it away because then you'll find out where I live. There's a burrito place that gives you a burrito that might be the size of my thigh, which is very, very big. I've got a large quad. So, um, I don't know how you feel about that imagery that I just gave I like, you. I don't like your, your thigh burrito analogy. Um, that's a bit disturbing, not going to lie, <laughs> but I do like giant burritos. Um, yeah, I mean, Chipotle is pretty good. Qdoba is all right. Um, Freebirds bit bland for my taste um there's another one called uh what was it called zappos or something like that oh they actually had like roasted potatoes in the mix and to me that was the game changer super good stuff um but yeah i love a good sized uh, burrito roasted potatoes in the burrito i like the sweet potatoes in the burrito also i'm not gonna lie i do like sweet potatoes in there too yeah i just like to like triple down on the starches <laughs> <laughs> triple down on the starches all right alts this is this is an important question yams sweet potatoes can you tell the difference um is a yam a sweet potato I, I thought a sweet potato was a yam all right we've wasted enough of your time here at the top of the show let's get into it <laughs> indeed <laughs> <laughs> for the culture the fabs community has asked fabian to burn to send to the burn address 
a whole bunch of tokens. <laughs> Fabian said, sure, I'll burn them, but I'm going to keep 4.2 million just for the culture. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. That's a good amount for the culture, but you know what? Um, they used his likeness. So it was a uh, fair game, right? <laughs> hey, you know, if you send tokens somewhere, you you lose control of what happens to them. Yeah, um, indeed. <laughs> Fabian didn't have to burn them, but he did. He burned a lot of them and he kept 4.2 million. Who knows? Maybe at some point in the future, those 4.2 million tokens will be used for some amazing good. Maybe like a beach party in Ibiza. Mm. Ooh, now huh? you're talking about culture right there, my friend. Yeah, that is the serious culture. Um, all right. We don't want to spend too much time talking about fabs because we did do some fabs talk last week, but there's been a couple more memes that have popped up on the scene. Alts. One of those is Pepito. Although we don't have a picture popped up around Pepito right now. I'll tell you that frog is really making me happy. How about you? Yeah. I've seen a bunch of frogs in the chat right there <laughs> today. <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely here in full force. Shout yeah. I love it. Uh, <laughs> I am a proud Pepito holder. That is not financial advice. Uh, and I actually just picked up a platy that I wanted to donate to the vault because I, I wanted to donate something pink because uh, I want to get on that community train that people are riding right now. So uh, take that as a pledge from the Valorian. I will be dropping a platy to the Pepito vault. Very cool. Very cool. I got to find something to send as well. <laughs> Look at all those frogs. It's incredible. <laughs> they ribbit, just keep <laughs> Uh, there's been some, you know, I'm going to, oh, Todd says, what's up with the frogs? It's all about Pepito, my friend. It's all about Pepito. Um, all right. So that's not an endorsement for Pepito, but we have seen an explosion in meme coins across the ecosystem. And it's brought a lot of really interesting culture and at least some entertainment to our ecosystem. It's brought total value locked over to universal swaps, meaning we've got some value actually going back and forth and some liquidity pools where this value is being held. I think that's a good thing overall for the ecosystem. You can disagree about whether or not meme coins are like have legs and will be around in the ecosystem for a long period of time. But what you can't disagree with is that it has brought some excitement to a chain where we've all been feeling a little bit down. Yeah. I mean, for sure. It's brought some excitement, some fun, some new eyes, which always is always great. Right. My favorite part is just the memes. I just love to see ridiculous, funny memes because <laughs> I'm here for the laughs and the tech. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I think in the end, right, like ultimately what we want is just a full budding ecosystem of everything, um, you know, memes, NFTs, cultural currencies, the tech side, you know, literally everything. We want it all, right? What I'm really interested to see long term with these meme coins is like we know how um, the non-fungible token communities that formed around PFPs kind of happened in the last cycle. You know, everybody ran to drop a PFP and then you immediately identified with that PFP if you repped it or not. And meetups happened around that PFP. Um, you know, let's look at events like NFT NYC or NFT Paris or NFT London, where you'd go and hang out with your ape friends at ape fest, or you'd go be a doodle or you insert your favorite PFP there or, clones like us here um what's interesting is or, or what i find interesting is is maybe we'll see something pop up around these meme coins like whole communities will be created around meme coins and maybe you know people will identify less as the pfp right less with the non-fungible token and more with these kind of i don't know um if there's enough liquidity for them i was going to say highly liquid lsp sevens but let's just say like these these cultural ideas um that people have these jokes that we're sharing right i don't know I'll, I, i'm interested to see how it's going to go yeah no it's it's an interesting take um i because the barrier for entry is a lot lower than an nft project right i'm mean, obviously like we're in luxo you know all of our entities are pretty cheap compared to you know what they were back on ethereum back in the day trying to get into those you know uh circles whenever everything was just blowing up right it was a lot more pricey it was a bit more of a uh club you know mentality uh but yeah like i mean it's a lot easier to get in on the fun with memes i mean you didn't even own anything you can still just grab some of the stuff going around and, and play with those assets and just make funny stuff <laughs> you know and get involved but a lot of it too is it's just kind of a way to <clears throat> excuse me it's kind of a way to you know just uh voice your your kind of your current sentiment in the ecosystem that you live in right when in a fun joking but also like you know positive way yeah. 
memes are cultural. I mean, we talked about memes last week and we're going to talk about memes again here. I mean, we're talking about them actually. I, I didn't even intend to start going down this rabbit hole with, um, you know, these meme tokens as maybe potentially cultural currencies. I mean, it's going to take one, it'll take, uh, Jesus, it'll take one project to say, Hey, I will take Pepito as payment. And then all of a sudden, I mean, that opens a door for something really interesting. Um, there's a lot that could happen here. I think I'm in for it. Uh, I'm not in on every meme. Some of the memes are really kind of mean spirited, I think, but I'm in on a lot of yeah. them. I'm in on the ones that are good natured that are trying to build a community around them. So if you are behind one of those meme tokens, cool. If you're not behind one of those meme tokens and you're participating, cool if you're not being mean spirited and you're actually trying to build a culture that is going to be positive reinforcing and add to the long-term health of this ecosystem then cool right that's three cools man cool cubed cool 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 cubed, <laughs> cool, cool cubed. ice cube would be proud yeah for sure all right so on the meme contest front louis and along with ECJ launched a meme contest in honor of that interview that he did. And he says, in celebration of my recent interview with everything currency, that's ECJ. And to spread the pink Luxo love, I'm thrilled to announce a meme contest and NFT giveaway. And I'm pretty sure he's going to give some swag away there too, right, Alts? Oh, yeah. He's giving away some goodies. So I think some pins and some stickers and a shirt, um, some good high quality swag. So, yeah, definitely a chance to snag some goodies. All right. So. We can't run from the truth. It's been a volatile time in this ecosystem. So we're going to show you some of the memes that people created to try to win um, <laughs> some of this swag. <laughs> and Louis even said the best memes are going to end up on the walls at the Luxo HQ. So let's look at what some of the community has presented as memes to win this, uh, this contest. Look at that. It says, uses Luxo universal profile, needs to pay for gas fees. I think that's something like if you made your universal profile through Luxo, right? Through universalprofile.cloud, you have the relayer. If you made a profile through uh, some other um, situation, let's call it, you are not going to have access to the universal profile relayer. You might need to fund your controller, right? It might, or if you want to get through quickly um, and like pay for a high amount of gas, you might want to fund your controller. I don't think everybody really understands that alts and it's been a little bit of a friction point. Yeah. I mean, I think it's good that there's options, right? I mean, it's nice to use the relayer when, you know, it's free. It's easy when, if you set up that way, but like, I mean, if you're active, you know, dabbling in NFTs and memes and stuff, yeah, you're going to want to just fund your relayer your own to just have it. And, and luckily this is all super cheap right now anyway. So it doesn't take much at all. Even just throwing one licks in your relayer controller. Yeah. It'll last you a long time. All right. Well, again, memes speak to the truths of people's lives and their experiences. So we just figured we'd show that one. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> this one made me chuckle. Yeah. When you start taking notes on successful marketing, Fabian uh, taking some notes from Fobs there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the ridiculous of it, the ridiculousness of it is what's funny. Yeah, that sure. you secured our generational wealth. Uh, I was a uh, blockchain, I was a dev on a blockchain for creative economy with new standards in the smoothest UX, and you got the sun on the floor. What a fucking legend. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it. great. Uh, I love this one too. It's a beautiful piece. The next evolution, just uh, sun going down on Ethereum going and coming up on Luxo, right? Coming yep. up pink. Coming up pink with a little bit of futuristic fun. Okay, next one. <laughs> sorry the forest gun face kills me but and just like that i could add a custom metadata after deployment with lsp7 which is cool and it's something we can definitely do you can add custom metadata after you deploy that lsp7 token um that's that's a neat little feature again of that new token standard absolutely love that yeah okay next one rob <laughs> how can we <laughs> further innovate the crypto space for math adoption uh, one guy, meme coins, meme coins. <laughs> <laughs> the next person, a centralized L2. And then down the end, you've got the Luxo person saying a decentralized L1 with no gas and updated contracts designed by the ERC 20 founder. And what happens to that person alts? Um, uh, they did not go up. They went down out the window. <laughs> <laughs> out the window. Perfect. Down and I mean, right. Isn't that the state of the market? Oh my God. 
It is. It is. Um, but yeah, we know that stuff's cyclical, right? It, it money moves from sector to sector and, and it just is what it is. It always has been, but yeah, it's always fun to kind of make fun of where, uh, where it currently is at. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Next one, Rob. Uh, yeah. So this one's from Oppenheimer inspired. We got five in there. Fobbenheimer. Uh, they won't fear it until they understand it and they won't understand it until they've used it. That is very, very true. Oh God. Speaking to the truth of this ecosystem, just need more things for people to use. Next meme, Rob. Some of these cut to the core, right? Of how people are feeling. We've got someone sitting there. We're looking over his shoulder at a screen says Luxo roadmap phase one announce project phase two, hype it up phase three, delay it phase four, say soon phase five, repeat phase N top five, top three blockchain. This is speaking to like how the community feels, although it is divorced a little bit from reality here. Obviously, that is not the roadmap. So if you are experiencing <laughs> this for the first time, this is a tongue in cheek joke, because if you're here right now, we all believe this truly is has the potential to be a top three blockchain. Um, this is just poking fun at the time it's taken to make it happen. Yeah. Um, side note on that one. Uh, they actually did say that there is a Luxo roadmap, an official roadmap coming soon. So that'll be oh. great. TM. TM indeed. Hey, <laughs> All right, one next Rob. one, Rob. <laughs> when you see a smart contract that isn't upgradable, no. <laughs> and you got Spider Man in bed, just holding, holding his stomach. It's, he's got such a stomach ache about it. He's can barely, barely, barely alive. <laughs> <laughs> next one. Three months after May Luxo Mainnet launch, you've got uh, the interview going on and the ape saying, uh, hey, when moon? These uh, there's a couple from Larry Lamborghini that are actually quite funny. I do appreciate them. Yeah, those are great. <laughs> yeah. All right, next. We got one from Wonka. Yeah. So I heard that I can have my universal profile name visible on Blockchain Explorer. Hmm. Yeah. Like, and it's the Wonka. Tell me more because right now we can't. <laughs> the, the Blockchain Explorer is pretty inconsistent, and there are definitely some things that need to be improved. So again the memes are kind of cutting to the truth of some of the issues that we're having while at the same time doing so in kind of a light manner, people's feelings shouldn't be hurt. <laughs> that's, that's what I'd say. And uh, what do we got now? Oh, the final one. <laughs> All right. This is one that Fabian actually quote tweeted and said, there has never been a truer meme. And we've got uh, two different tracks. We got the Luxo team up top that you can see is, busily working to set up the booth at ETH Denver and down below we've got Mad Max we've got a Mad Max scene with memes everywhere and the universal swaps uh uh UFO flying through alt can you tell us a tale about Mad Max and why this meme might actually be hopeful did I lose alts Okay, I lost alt, so now I'm going to roll through here. All right, so if you're looking at this meme right now, I was relying on alt and his film knowledge to get me through. This is actually a tale of redemption. In Mad Max, there is a hopeful element to this where really a community is coming together in tough times to make the best of their situation. Now, I do realize Mad Max is a little bit dystopian, but in this time, in this time where there's been little uncertainty in this ecosystem, we've actually all rallied around this idea of these memes and these meme tokens to kind of come together. Like I said previously, I don't know if it'll have legs or not, but what I do know is it's given the community a little bit of a rallying cry to come together. And I think that that is ultimately very, very, very positive, And I'm super pumped about it. I know that it's positive because the hub yesterday met in a mega space with the Sleepy Project. And that thing went like four or five hours. It was incredible how long it went. Lots of different projects had the opportunity to speak. People really were vibing out. Um, I say vibing out because every creator that got up there and had the opportunity to share, um, share their projects, share their thoughts, share their feelings, there was someone else to resonate with those thoughts, feelings, emotions, and give them support and talk about their journey and kind of mirror this, this path that we're all walking together. It was actually a pretty exciting space. I popped in and out the best that I could. I was kind of busy yesterday, so I didn't have the opportunity to stay with it the entire time, but I definitely appreciated that space. And um, the hub along with Sleepy 
actually said that this won't be their only mega space, that they're going to try to get together and do it more frequently. And it's really a great opportunity to meet. There was over 14,000 attendees over the four to five hour stretch. That's 14,000 people that are coming in to experience the Luxo community. So although some of those memes are really cutting that we showed before, I would love it if Luxo would actually post a couple of those cutting memes as a remembrance of this time period, because why shy away from the truth? It's been a little bit of a volatile time. It's good to put these things into history and remember them. It's also important to put them in context right now, along with the HubDAO, that HubDAO space, along with the Sleepy Project, that this is a very, very positive time. And there's a lot of really, really great stuff going on. Fabian actually posted a tweet at the end of the space saying the Lexo community is really feeling the love today. We actually clipped, um, actually Metaversal had a clip from Florian, one of the founders of Common Ground, actually speaking about the Luxo project in a very positive way and the community in a very positive way. And this came from that space. So Rob said, hey, this is motivating. So we decided to put it in the show today. Let's get it up, Rob. Us finding the Luxo ecosystem was really a game changer for us. I And frankly, I mean, I'm doing crypto as long as Fabian or roughly, and I have not seen an ecosystem like Luxo before. There is to me nothing like it. It's really absolutely unique. So I think that's also to me the biggest value of Naxo. To me, it trumps the technology. I know Fabian probably doesn't want to hear that, but I think actually the, the quality of the people is the absolute number one argument, I think, for people to join Naxo, even more than the technology. It's really, I don't know an ecosystem like that out there that is so well intentioned, um, non hypey. Uh, sort of really after the fundamentals, um, that's absolutely unique. Like somehow you were able to keep out all the stills and all the money grabbers and sort of amass a significant amount of people who are in it for the right reasons. And um, all the crypto OGs that joined crypto before 2017 effectively when shit got really expensive, um, that's the world they are wishing to live in actually. The world where all the money grabbers never came and we're still idealistically building the real shit. Um, and I think Luxo is maintaining this and this will pay off at some point. This is beyond a question. And that is the message that the team, let's say from Fabian on down has been trying to tell us now, as we've gone through this volatile period that we are just beginning this journey, I think actually I'll quote Fawn from yesterday because I'm pretty sure I heard her say this. There was a beginning to the project and that beginning has kind of an end, uh, right? And that's kind of the reversible ICO period through very recently, just pre mainnet. And now we're at the beginning of this really meaty section of the journey where builders start to reveal the possibilities behind the network. And that is what a lot of us who are here, that community that Florian is talking about, that's what we've been waiting for. We've been waiting for that exposure to these use cases that, that are going to bring value to our lives in more ways than just selling meme coins for profit. Now, I know that we've mentioned meme coins at the beginning of the show. I know that we went through memes. A lot of that stuff is really just entertaining. And I want to look at it more from the lens of what's possible from a cultural currency standpoint, as we move forward, how can these things be leveraged to create very tight knit communities around ideas? I don't know how it'll look long term, but what I do know is that it is going to be something that is going to bring meaningful, at least history to our journey that we'll be able to look back on and say, this is how it transpired. And this is how we stuck together. And why did we stick together? Well, to Florian's point, we're a community that's here because we're the believers. If we wanted to go play in the shitcoin casino, we could be over on these other networks, but we're not. We're here because we believe in this long-term vision to uh, the long-term vision of smart contract platforms where we can start to unravel, start to reveal what is actually hidden beneath the surface of these very simple use cases. Luxo speaks to that long-term vision, and I'm really, really excited for where it's going to go in the future. The Embrace the Chain account actually says in a tweet, hey, adoption takes time. We're still at an early stage of Luxo, but the numbers continue to grow, especially active accounts. 
The Embrace the Chain account is actually an example of an, orga an a organic community that is coming together around an idea. It's an organic community that's coming together to spread the greater mission of the chain. Embrace the Chain was actually a marketing slogan that was conceived of by Marjorie early on in the process. Embrace the Chain now is an account that is community formed to spread that message out to the greater crypto space. Underneath that tweet where they said that adoption takes time, they actually quote the number of universal profiles and that's 17,267. And they give the graphs of the usage. And what we can see is that the active accounts are actually trending up daily. That's what we want, friends. We go from the inception of mainnet to the launch of universal profiles. You see that initial spike in January when we had Universal page come online, and now we've been actually seeing more and more people use the chain. That is fantastic. How are we going to see even more? How are we going to go parabolic? Well, we need builders to actually expose more possibilities for the end user. And that is something that the new standards can really unveil for us. Alt, you're back. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Had a complete internet crash there, unfortunately, um, but good to be back. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's what we need, right? Is more builders, more users, more activity, and it just kind of builds on itself. And uh, that kind of continued growth can just go exponential at some point, right? Yeah. So how do we attract more builders to the chain? All it's, well, this morning when we were prepping the show, Luxo actually said, hey, get ready for it. The grants program is launching on May 1st, 2024. Marjorie said, mark your calendars. If you are a builder, if you're someone like yesterday in the space, I heard Tonto saying he's very interested to build, but he's looking for what to build. And Fabian actually said, hey, on a reputation system, you build it, that's grantable. I'll just weigh in with some ideas. That's what we oh, need, man. friends. We need yeah. builders to reveal, reveal the possibilities of the new standards. Yes, and once you kind of open, when you start opening the eyes of other builders in the space, right? Like, of course, we've seen some of the same things that exist elsewhere already being built, which, you know, we need that too, right? But yeah, when we really start diving into new iterations of things with standards, and, uh, you know, features and, uh, you know, things that can only exist on Luxo. Well, that's how you really kind of change the game, right? Mm, absolutely. So builders, get ready. Start building your stuff because at the same time that you are looking to get your projects and ideas granted, the thing that we've been crying for, Fabian, to market and sell this blockchain is happening concurrently. On April 18th, we have Fabian meeting with the institutional investors um, as part of Uphold Institutional is uh, their next token discovery series. It's going to be a webinar. And Fabian is going to be able to expose institutional investors to this incredible technology. He's going to explore what's the key difference between Ethereum and Luxo. And that is a tricky one. People want to call it just another EVM. It's a fork of ETH 2.0, but that's not true. It is an EVM with new standards, standards that enable um, that enable builders to build things for end users, build products for the end user that will mimic experiences that they already are used to. So they will not have to learn new things necessarily. They'll be able right. to just adopt and use blockchain technology in a way that is familiar to them. Well, that's the thing, right? Is even as exciting as just Web3 is in general to us, we're still a tiny, tiny little portion of the world that actually not only, I mean, there's a tiny portion that even holds this stuff, let alone that are actually active. The people that are actually active is even a much, much smaller group uh, because it's still way too complicated, right? And even on these L2s and stuff that's, people are like, you know, excited about base and blast and the ones that are cool. It's awesome that, you know, in the meantime, but like really that's not going to move the needle for true mass adoption because it's got to be something so simple that, you know, even a grandmother could do without having any knowledge of blockchain, right? Like don't have to deal with, seed phrases, you know, or having to learn about gas or anything else, right? Just make it as simple as like a web two app that they already use. Right. Mm, yeah. So when my grandmother wants to look up how to make banana bread. They can, she can find the best recipe that's committed to the chain. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. That's a terrible example, but I just figured I'd say it. All right. Alts on a live show. What can go wrong will go wrong. I swear to God, when I woke up this morning, you heard me. I was a rain cloud for the first two hours of our pre-show. So we're going to roll right over the top of any um, of these issues that we've been having. And we're going to get right into the network update. Oh. 
process. Okay, before I read this one here, I just want to make a, a mention of the fact that normally we would like to propose or we'd like to show you charts of validators, how we're growing as a network until the liquid situation has resolved itself. We're just skipping over those chart sections because um, we want to make sure that what we give stands long term. So again, that's the reason that this show over the past, let's call it six weeks, has not provided charts in this section. We do find the metrics around network growth to be very important, in fact, more important than price. So as we move forward through this show, you can expect the charts in that area to improve and become a focal point of the show because that is te te a testament to network health and the growth of the network. In lieu of providing those charts, we're gonna focus on the network upgrades as given to us by the team. So in that first tweet, Luxo says, Denkun update. The Denkun hard fork is a huge opportunity to allow zero knowledge L2s on Luxo, which is what we are really excited about. The team has been closely monitoring the stability of Ethereum's Denkun fork and also observing the recent trends in blob gas fees, which are gladly stabilizing. If you're wondering why they're mentioning zero knowledge L2s on Luxo, let me posit a guess. On a chain where identity is important and reputation is important, what zero knowledge proofs will provide will be a certain amount of privacy. Privacy is important, right? We're gonna need some privacy in this ecosystem. Zero knowledge proofs provide the technology to um, allow, uh, uh, what do we wanna say? Allow the network to prove something is true without exposing the underlying data. That is important. That's a cool thing. Why are we monitoring, um, why are we monitoring the L2, the ZK L2s? Well, zero knowledge proofs like zero knowledge L2s tend to be a little bit more expensive than other technologies. So with the cost reduction associated with the blobs, it will make zero knowledge technology more affordable for Luxo to implement on our side. That is a very high level overview there. Um, I could certainly do a better job of that, but I want you to just know, associate zero knowledge proofs with privacy and associate um, this idea of a Denkun fork instituting blobs on the Luxo network with making it possible here at an affordable rate. Want to add we anything like, else? Yeah, we like privacy. We like affordability. So love to see that impl implementation. And that's one of the great things about the approach that Luxo took is we can build with our own standards and really change the game in a lot of the ways that UX and, and identity and reputation, but then also let the teams and the, over in the Ethereum ecosystem build and improve the, the infrastructure. And then we can just adapt that as well. So we kind of get best of both worlds. So love to see this. Yeah, it's the best. I was going to sing Zoe 101, not going to do it. So it's <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, the uh, staking burst has an update says, Hey, since the Denkund hard fork is coming to the Luxo mainnet, we decided to spin up our testnet node and validators again. We will actively contribute in the process of testing Denkund on testnet and provide our feedback to the Luxo network team. All of this to make sure both staking burst as Luxo will have a smooth mainnet upgrade to Denkund. If you're interested to join us and practice how to prepare your mainnet node for the incoming hard fork, you can start a testnet node and join our Telegram and Discord chat to discuss your experiences with us. I wanted to include this in the show because just like the ETH stakers community on Reddit, which is really, or, or even Discord, that has really been an incredible resource for solo stakers in the Ethereum community proper, let's call it the Ethereum L1. The staking verse has been an, an incredible, oh, Hannah Montana Sage, you're right. The best of both worlds was Hannah Montana. You got that. Um, <laughs> The staking verse has provided an incredible community for solo stakers. If not only do they offer pools, a pool solution, but if you are a solo staker on the network, you probably want to be hanging out in the staking verse telegram chats where you can get an incredible amount of knowledge, help, resource, camaraderie around running your own node and securing the blockchain from your home. If you do not want to run it, uh, physical hardware in your home, Stakingverse actually is partners with DigitalOcean and they're offering a referral code where you could run and set up your note in the cloud. So this is actually, again, can't plug in enough. If you're a solo staker like I am, 
you probably want to hang out in the staking verse. And if you're looking to set up uh, infrastructure in the cloud, you can actually get some cloud credits from the staking verse. Thank you guys. Love to see that infrastructure build out for the community on the staking side. <sighs> for sure. I'm not gonna I lie, I got a little thrown off when you when you got beamed up to the mothership there. My bad, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got the next one? Yeah, next up we got one from the official ERC725 account. Universal profiles are now available on the Microsoft Edge store uh, via the Chrome Web Store. So yeah, download the app browser extension for Microsoft Edge. Very cool. Love to see this continued adaption. Um, adoption, I'm sorry, for well, I guess adaption because it was adapted into the <laughs> Microsoft Edge ecosystem. But yeah, I love to see this continued growth. It's another browser uh, option for the fam. Yeah, and Microsoft Edge being a very large browser with a very large user base, like this is very positive. Um, I could say very a few more times, but we want to capture all users in a place where they are comfortable. So to expand out across browsers here into that large user base of Microsoft Edge is actually bullish, very bullish. For Super bullish. Products. Yeah. Absolutely love that. It's going to open us to a lot more users because um, that's what ultimately what we want is more people using universal profiles, right? Um, speaking of more users, got a tweet here from Fabian. Uh, we're working with a third party on a bridge to Ethereum with a very interesting architecture. If this works out, it will be the first trust minimized Ethereum to Ethereum bridge ever built on zero knowledge proofs. Um, it's getting him super excited. And he says that, say, he goes on to say that safety uh, is key and paramount. So yeah. Safety first, fam. And there was a couple of questions of people not quite sure what he meant on some of this stuff. Um, so he kind of went on to elaborate. He says this bridge will allow any token from Ethereum to move to Luxo and back in a trustless way, which is very important. But yes, we are building, we aren't building or inventing it. We are integrating it with Luxo together with the inventors. So that is mm -hmm. pretty awesome. And if those inventors enable DeFi on Luxo, enable us to bring real value and deep liquidity to our DEXs. I am all for it. This could enable stable coins on our, in our ecosystem that are the premier stable coins. Um, they may be wrapped. I don't know how it will work, but that's what we need, friends. We can't be in the silo forever. Um, yeah. This will just expand the footprint of our ecosystem. Well, exactly. I think, it, I think it's time to grow up, right? Like we've been building kind of in the shadows, and I think it's time that we kind of move up to the next step. And, and this would be a pivotal one to, you know, once we start getting the, T, the DeFi infrastructure elements we can actually get some real liquidity here which is what's needed for you know for the users to be able to do what they want to do and as well as the builders to be sustainable and to get the resources and things they need to, to continue to foster positive growth right sure so if you're building on luxo perhaps a DeFi protocol who knows tell us about your developer experience participating in this survey will help the team in improving their tools and documentation so they can better support everyone. I love the fact that they are listening and they're really going out of their way to make outreach to the builders in the community at large. This is a developer survey, but guess what? If you're a non-developer, you can fill it out too. Alts, what I saw though was if you try to fill it out as a non-developer, guess, guess how many questions you get through? 7.25. <laughs> Good guess. No, one. <laughs> are you a developer <laughs> answer is no Good for you thank you for taking the survey we'll have one for non-developers soon so like yeah. you can take it you're just not going to get very far um leave this to the technical people because they're looking for the technical feedback on that please friends thank you luxo team really appreciate the hard work you're doing to become more open and less of a black box although i always wondered about the black box thing alt right you know like when an airplane crashes the only thing you can find is the black box right you yeah, ever notice but, that i mean yeah i don't I don't know. It's the same uh, application in this scenario. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Fair enough. But like, I always thought about the black box. What? Like, what is that thing? What is it made of that people can find it? Like they can only find the one in the plane. Um, I think it's um, the same thing that Wolverine's uh, nails are made out of. Yes. Adamantium. Adamantium. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah sure. Break my bones, but I'm coming back. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, you know, let's do a little bit stuff for the non-technical fam. Um, even though I'm not wearing pink today. Almost everything I have on is pink, and it's my favorite. Let's check out some pink tweets. Okay. I like how you're the spaceman, and I'm just the super dapper dude. <laughs> 
Eth, you're always looking dapper, my friend. Yeah, thank you. All right, let's go back to that tweet, Rob. You got off the screen too quick. Yeah, so we got one here from ERC725 again. Um, beautiful little feature of myself there. So yeah, that, shout out for the fam. Thanks for the feature. Um, did you know you can use your universal profile as a profile link? Check out lock, uh, Alt Anonymous. Yeah, so I've been using my link uh, instead of LinkedIn. I retired my LinkedIn officially. So this is so much cleaner and fun. And uh, that's exactly what I want to do is drive people to my universal profile anyway, because that's where I live. Yeah. And for the people who are like, I don't know where to get the link. Where is it? You know, Alt does a nice job of just showing you. It's right up there. Actually, it's Universal Profiles account tells you it's right up there. It's right yeah. the just look at that little button right there. Because <laughs> I've seen some people tweet, I don't know where to find the link. It's it's right there. Now just, you know, the more you know. <laughs> get the rainbow moving across the screen. Okay, we talked about the Wolverine with his adamantium. And Danger Zone says, Wolfie slaps hard in pink on Luxo. And then tags, Luxo, Alts Anonymous, and Boost had to PFP my childhood X-Man. Sometimes my claws slip. That's pretty <laughs> yeah. hard right there. That one goes super hard. That's shout out Pixel fam. Uh, yeah, looking good there, Danger. That, you're literally, I, I feel like I'm in the danger zone being near near that one. <laughs> on, I'm on the sport bike racing the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, we got one from Amir. <clears throat> Dynamic NFTs are a key feature of the Luxo blockchain, allowing NFTs to evolve and change over time. I've started from a blank artboard. Oh, okay, looks like he's making some on-chain dynamic art there, starting with a pink slate. All right, take a guess. Is that a drum? Is it an apple? Is it a passion fruit? Is it a pangolin? <laughs> what is it? Sushi. Okay, I could see that. <laughs> Uh, okay, that was outside of the uh, what I thought it would be. You know, in Mario, the little guys they wear like I don't know what they're called. They wear they're like all in red and they got the white mask. Could be that too. Which I guys? Know. I don't all know. Red with the white mask. I, I think they're in Super Mario too. You know, they're like in red and they got the white mask. Hmm. I'm oh, in the myself. second one, yes, in the second one, yeah. Yeah, I'm dating myself. I hope you're, you're Googling that. You super dated yourself there, bro. <laughs> All right, well, Do you remember I'm back old. When, uh, in the 70s when the Atari was the... Uh... <laughs> no, no. It, listen, leave me alone. I can be old if I want to be You're old. not old. You're just relatively old in this space in general. Relatively old, sure. But you know who's not old? The winner of the pinkest tweet. Shout out Julian, julianverse.eth. Good morning with Miami. This was a throwback with Marjorie there in 2022. Embrace the chain with Luxo, DMAT, and Marjorie. Um, outfit powered by Dress X. Looking, uh, speaking of dapper, yeah, looking good. Yeah. So if you didn't know, Julian's a Web3 fashion at Dress X, um, a mentor at Farfetch, LVMH innovator, alumni. Yeah, doing some dope stuff in the fashion world for sure. So wearing a pink bow tie. Yeah. I'd wear that pink bow tie. Yeah. Of course, I, I need to see it under my beard. <laughs> it would be there in spirit though oh okay yeah like a hidden trait so to speak yeah now you're talking now you're talking now I'm talking. <laughs> all right on more serious stuff. on more serious news as we get to the end of the show here common ground the place to meet in web3 our good friends over there had a major update introducing spark and lsp gating literally a huge step forward alt give me your thoughts on this i know you were there yeah this was awesome i've been i mean i know a lot of us have been anxiously awaiting you know for the lsp integration into common ground to do some really cool stuff you know with our lsp so yeah this was this was really cool so they they gave us a lot more alpha than we were ready for um so if you didn't know spark it's an off-chain currency right so this means that it's kind of similar to points that you can use um you can use that spark on common ground to upgrade things um you know, on your own profile or in your community. Uh, and there's going to be a lot more features to come, but just to give you an idea, you can like, um, you can do a vanity URL. So you can change the URL. Like I did one for the MetaHeads account. Um, instead of just, you know, hash numbers and letters, it says hash meta MetaHeads now, you know, so that, that's pretty awesome. You can boost communities. Um, you can do roles, tokens, badges. There's a few other things I think already um, out the gate and there's more and more coming. So, and this is off-chain stuff. So it's a, it makes it a lot easier. There's no transaction to do these things, which is which is really nice because it's not needed for these features, uh, right? And they actually did a wonderful, they, they gifted out 10K um, to each of the accounts that had already set up with their universal profile. So that's a pretty awesome uh, airdrop for the fam out there. 
but and they also opened up you know token gating for lsp sevens and eights so you can I mean, you've already seen you know several different uh communities already doing token gating stuff like even with keys we already kind of did one um you know leading into that but yeah so they're gonna have they have spark and then there's also they drop some alpha on another token coming um so yeah there's, there's a lot of a lot of a lot to be bullish on for common ground so much to be bullish on for common ground <clears throat> the ability to do lsp token gating is something we've all been waiting for because there there are alphas that not everyone deserves to hear and this allows for lots of tiered systems of chats that is all controlled through that verification based upon whether or not you hold the lsps that could be an lsp8 it could be an lsp7 and like we get back to the beginning of the show with meme coins, I've seen some of the groups say if you hold a certain threshold of a meme coin, you might be able to get into a whale group um, versus if you only hold a couple, you might just be part of the community. Really interesting to see the experiments that will come here. This is a huge step forward. This is exactly what this community needed. Um, thank you so much, Common Ground, for making it happen. We are with you every single step of the way. You are legends. Yeah, indeed. Keep uh, keep going, Florian and fam. We we appreciate you, and uh, yeah, we love what you're building. It's it's much needed. We needed a better, more decentralized version of Discord, right? Mm -hmm. And on that note, if you are a keys ring holder, head on over to Common Ground and claim your role in that ring holder channel, and check out that new custom share link we have because that's where we're gonna start dropping ring holder only knowledge, and um, I would say we'll come hot. So we have some perks lined up for you. Are you looking at me? Token gating, me is, fun. Token me token gating is fun. <laughs> can you control the eyes on that thing? I can. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like I mean, that's where you're gonna find most of the alpha. M most. Not all. Most. Ish. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> all right. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. Thanks for the support. Even on a day when it seemed like everything possible could go wrong. Oh God. If you knew the issues that we had running up into this show, right through the beginning of the show, where Alts has been back to the mothership for a hot minute, you would be very proud of us for making this show happen today. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you enjoy your Friday. Yes. Yeah. Thank you all. As always, we appreciate you guys tuning in live always love to see the chats hopping um shout out to all the frogs that showed up and uh yeah everyone everyone who you know watch on your own time has a wonderful friday and uh, an amazing weekend hope you get some nice uh nice chill time with your friends and family um but before we head out eth um i got a quick question for you <laughs> go ahead after last week i'm traumatized yeah, I'm, I'm going back to more pg here now <laughs> <laughs> um why did the scarecrow uh win the award Uh, I don't know. Tell me. Uh, because he was outstanding in his field. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Give me the next one. Okay. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they're males. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. No, uh, because they make everything up. I was going like the Adam and Eve route. Yeah, like, right. Oh, okay. All right, one more, one more. All right, so uh, this one's actually just me telling you, but I, I, I basically, I was at the library yesterday and I asked the librarian like if they had any books um, on paranoia and she leaned in and whispered, they're right behind you. <laughs> Scared the shit out of me. I'm never going back to that library. All right, all right. All, all of that is much more PG than last week. When you said, hey, 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 Eth, if you're not feeling so good, you could punch an orphan. What are they going to do? Tell their parents. <laughs> so, but you just, uh, you just brought that. Now we're not PG anymore in this one. Uh, you just right. referenced the non PG. Right. It's okay. I was waiting for it. <laughs> but yeah, fam, we, uh, you know, going back to that, uh, whenever I lost, uh, I lost signal earlier. Um, yeah, we're, you know, we're just, we're basically on this road to redemption in our community. I love to see the vibes that we're kind of circling around through NFTs and memes and other things. We're, we're kind of coalescing and building this energy back up. And I think I think we'll be moving back in the right direction before too long on every, on every other front, right? So love to see the continued positivity out there and fam. And uh, yeah, just keep it up. 
keep doing your part to uh, move the move the goalpost, as it were. Yeah, actually, if you made it this far, I'm going to drop a little bit of alpha for you. Uh, Monday this week, we're going to drop an audio only podcast. that will be divergent from what you're used to from us, where um, you'll be able to hear from the builders who are building in this space, meaning the technical builders. Um, I won't tell you who's coming on yet, but look, watch the keys Twitter account for the announcements and for a little bit of sampling. Uh, we put a lot of energy into this um, and it is different content. It is not like listening to the wrap up. So keep your eye out for it. Um, it'll drop this Monday on your favorite podcast platforms. Yeah, it's going to be a nice, um, like you said, divergence into a new sector, kind of, you know, hearing from actual builders about building, which is really, really important, you know, for a lot of people to hear. So yeah, keep your, keep your head up for that one. Okay. All right, fam. Well, enjoy your weekend. Do what you do best. Stay pink.